Hello everybody! Welcome to episode 9 of my tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. This one will cover the topic of the metal industry. We're going to go over the creation of metal bars, alloys and steel. So first up, let's talk about the basics. To do any form of metal processing, you need two things. Ore and fuel. Fuel can be made at the wood furnace, you can create charcoal out of your logs, you can either order it like this for singular uh, dosages, you can also order it here in the work orders menu for a single time job, here we will produce 10 things in a row, or you order it in the work orders area and you can set up an automated system for that as well. If you want to automate it, I highly recommend you to set up proper minimum values for logs or maximum values for refined coal so you don't accidentally burn away all your logs. Either way, we are going to leave it like that. I'm personally not a big fan of automating charcoal making, but it depends on the situation your fortress is in. So, this will be made in the meantime. Over here at the smelter, there's two things that you can create here. For one, alloys and regular metal bars. Also, we can create fuel here, and that's the first thing that I want to cover before we go over to the metal bars. So, over here, we can see now every job that has make in it is alloy except for these two. Make coke from bituminous coal and make coal from lignite. These two jobs will transform lignite and bituminous coal into fuel, but they also will still require fuel, so you'll still require the wood furnace to kickstart the entire process. You can build all the buildings you require here, the metal, the metalsmith, and the furnaces. Mind you that there is always a magma version for all these that doesn't require fuel anymore. We're going to set up these later in the series as well, don't you worry. But for now, we have to work with things that have fuel. So bituminous coal and lignite are really, really powerful, but you don't always have them available. More often than not, you'll be charcoaling the whole time, either chopping wood from the surface or buying it from other caravans or chopping it in the caverns. All of these things work. Now, we have dealt with the problem of the fuel, but now what up next? We require ore to work with. So I have already found a spot here, and when it comes down to ores, there's a lot of them, and you will always note, notice them that because they, they look really different, they are veiny, but if you are insecure, you can always go into the labor menu, stone use, and here you have economic stone and other stone. Over here, you have a table that gives you exact readouts what's what. So here, the hematite we got is an ore of iron. And you can check this out for all manner of different things here. So you get a proper readout what you can get out of what. Some ores don't only yield one metal, but also two. For example, galena yields silver and lead. There's a couple of them. Tetrahedrite here, copper and silver, but most of the time you get out one type of metal and it is a very similar equation. One boulder of metal ore yields four bars of metal. So here with this uh, command, this auto command here, we can now order our miners to do vein mining. This is a really useful process which allows you to order your miners to automatically fetch a new work order when they're done with the part where they were before. As you see here, this way you can sign your dwarfs to mine out the entire vein. Works with metals and with gemstones. So it's also a nice way to determine if something is valuable or not. So if it doesn't uh, hit this thing here, usually that means it's nothing special. Now, we have now ore and we have fuel, so let's head back to the furnaces. The first thing that we are going to need to do is now setting up stockpiles. For one, I want to have a stockpile for my ore. So we go into the custom menu, stone, and here's an entire tab for metal ores. So you can either now go for all the ores in one stockpile zone, or you can just assign a singular type of ore for the stockpile zone. 
either way will work. I'm personally a big fan of specialized stockpile zones, but each to his own, I'd say. We crack up the number of wheelbarrows so the poor guys won't be carrying that by hand. The other thing we require now is another stockpile zone that will store the finished product. So we go on over here to the bars and blocks menu, and here, metal bars, that's exactly all the stuff that we want. And it's also quite useful to add in to the mix in the other materials section, the coal. So the finished fuel will be transported in there as well. I really like that one as well. Metal blocks, you will be not creating them too much, but you could also store them here. Okay, with that system, now we have the logistics down. We only have to wait now until the stuff has been delivered. So down here, everything that is marked with smelt, that's a job to create metal out of ore. Where there's make, that's a job to make alloy, except for bituminous coal and lignite. So we now know how to make basic metals. So far, so good. Let's talk alloys. So just like in real life, you can also mix in Dwarf Fortress different metals with, with one another to create a new metal. The interesting part here is that these metals have new qualities, they often have an increased value and lots of other goodies. To find now out how these alloys are being made, you either go into the work order menu and you go for the recipe that you want to know can also uh, go for the smelter here at the table. And for example, if you have no clue what electrum is being made of, you put it into the hot bar here, and now you can see it's silver and gold. This way you can decipher each alloy this way. Or you go to the Dwarf Fortress Wikipedia, read the article for that, or you just watch my video about alloys. I put the link in the description box. It's up to you. I want to mention here with the alloys, few things worth knowing, in my opinion. Most of these alloys are decorational or for the sake of value increase. Metal in Dwarf Fortress is worth a lot, and therefore it pays off to use it. The alloys that you have here, though, most of them don't put it they're not really necessary for the game there's three alloys that i want to mention here because they are powerful there's bronze it's a classical thing made out of copper and tin which is a really good metal for weapons there's steel which is the most famous alloy we're going to create that together later because it's a pretty unique process and beyond that all the other alloys you can actually make or not make, it's up to you. Bronze and steel are the most powerful alloys. One last thing that I want to mention here. Whenever you want to make alloys, always use the jobs that use ore instead of the ones that use bars where it's applicable. It's not always applicable. That's simply because if you make the stuff out of ore, your smithy will take one boulder of copper, one boulder of tin, fuse them together with one unit of fuel, and create 16 bars of bronze. If you make that only with bars, your smith will take one uh, bar of copper, one bar of tin, and fuse them together with one fuel into two bars of, of bronze. You see there, the efficiency is not the same. You get a lot more fuel out of it. And also you can cheat a little bit when you want to do alloys that are made out of silver, for example, you can use those boulders that only partially contain silver. The recipe will behave as if the boulder would be entirely out of silver. Good stuff in there. Beyond that, I don't want to go too deep into the topic of alloys. There's uh, not that much more to say. You make them just like you smelt uh, ores here. You just have to have the necessary ingredients available and the fuel, and then you have the option here clickable. That's that. Use it to your own liking. Good. So next thing on my plate, I want to talk about steel. So steel is a very desirable metal and it's a little bit more complicated to be created. So to create steel, you will have to refine pig steel, which is a alloy, pig iron, I'm sorry, pig iron into steel. So we're going to go now first for the pig iron creation. 
To create steel, you not only need iron and fuel, you need also a differ another thing, which is called flux stone. So flux stone is a lot of things. Flux stone is chalk, dolomite, limestone, marble, and basically every stone that has these um, qualities to make steel bars, pick iron bars, that's the stuff that you need. So in our fortress, we have access to, if I remember correctly, there was some limestone in between. So flux stone is something you'll have to look for in your fortresses. In our scenario, we got, no, that's diorite. Was it? I know that it was here. There's marble. So we're going to use that stuff. There's enough marble to go around and we are going to go now back to our forge and sign a new stockpile zone for marble. So without flux stone, you won't be able to make any steel. So that's something that you should totally keep in mind here. It is a necessary preliminary thing. Steel is also basically the most valuable of metals that you can create, besides of uh, gold and platinum and the like, but it is way more valuable than iron and uh, most other materials here, so that's worth mentioning. So, seems like we ran out of wood. It's something you should always keep an eye out if you're using charcoal. You should always have a lot of wood available. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward the video a little bit because we are out of fuel and we need that stone. I'll be right back in a hot minute. Now then, so I got that fuel thing resolved and I also have assigned a new wood stockpile in the vicinity of your wood furnace. You can always do that if you have to rely on it more. So. Now, I want to explain the process real quick. You do pick iron bars. These are being refined out of iron, flux stone, and fuel. That's the first thing that you require. So your process starts with refining iron bars. You won't be able to make steel without iron, therefore. That pick iron will now be refined into a pick iron bar. So this is now a new material that can then be again uh, refined into steel bars. This requires again another iron bar, a pig iron bar, a piece of flex stone, and fuel. So this is a very cost intense process and also labor intense process because you basically refine a refined product. Therefore, it is a one of the most potent and valuable materials. Keep in mind also that in the world of Dwarf Fortress, dwarfs are the only species that is capable of making steel. So this is really something special. Now, as you can see here, I just want to illustrate the process one time. It even picks up two pieces of fuel here, one for that iron bar, one for that iron bar. So to make steel is a really, really costly endeavor, but it's really paying off. As you see here, at least you make two steel bars per recipe, and their value is, to put it into comparison, triple the amount of iron. Now, to automate that, I recommend you to go for something like this. You go for make pig iron bars, you make steel bars, and now it's up to you how you want to configure this thing. I'm personally a big fan of going for a configuration like this. Whenever I have more than, let's say, 100 iron bars or how many iron bars you want to stockpile, it's up to you. And if I have enough refined coal, you guys make pick iron bars until we have, let's say, yeah, let's say 10. So this way we have a job that constantly keeps us some material available to refine. And then with the steel bars thing, the easiest way to do so is if the amount of pig iron bars is greater than one, and if the amount of steel bars is smaller than insert your uh, specific amount of steel that you want to stockpile, and that's that. You can of course also limit it by only getting it produced if you have enough refined coal around. There's plenty of different options how you can configure it. I'll leave that to your own creativity. There's a lot of different ways of configuring that. Okay, 
So now we know how to produce all these things, but what for? I want to go on over to the metalsmith's forge. First of all, I want to mention that to make a metalsmith's forge, you will always require an anvil. An anvil is only to be made out of iron and steel, so these materials are really, really valuable. If you cannot have any iron or steel in your home biome, check out that you either import those anvils or you import that iron. It's up to you how you want to do it, but uh, either way, anvils are really, really an important thing in your industry. Beyond that, metal can be now used just like stone and wood can be used in your fortress. You can make weapons and armor out of it specifically. I recommend here at this point to use either iron, bronze or steel as the go-to materials for your weaponry. If you really don't have anything better, copper is really not good, but it is better than nothing and I'd highly recommend you to have either one of these materials available. I also want to quickly mention that the smelter also has the opportunity for you to melt metal objects. This isn't so far really interesting, as the attackers that will come sooner or later drop items. Also, you can smelt down every single piece of metal. Uh, let me check here in the stocks. Basically everything with that icon here can be smeltered and the process is you mark it and then you assign the job into the smelter so you mark it and then you put the job up i personally would recommend you to have if you fall back to that a lot to have it as a uh, permanent job where you can say do this only if we have a lot of refined coal and if the amount of melt designated items is greater something like that. Just uh, keep in mind that this can eat up your fuel resources, but it is also a foolproof way to gather metals even in the most desolate and barren environments because the goblins will always carry metals to your fortress, also referred to as goblinite. Okay, so I'll leave it like that. These are the basics of metal processing. I hope I have catched all the things that you are interested in. If there were questions open, ask away. That's what the comment section is good for. Leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and if you want to have more info material about Dwarf Fortress, you'll find all that in the description box. There's plenty of other Dwarf Fortress things from me. So thanks for watching, have a good day, and see you soon.